Hello, my name is Cadence, and in this video, I'm going to break down the different mechanisms of sex determination using Punnett squares. So we're going to start off with the one you're probably most familiar with, which is XY mammalian sex determination. But before we do, I want to talk about the key real quick. So in each of these Punnett squares, you're going to see purple boxes to indicate which offspring is female and green boxes to indicate which offspring is male. You will also see on the side of each slide here what each chromosome is, whether it's an autosome or a sex chromosome. So if you're confused about what something is at any point, you can always just look to the side. Starting off with XY sex determination, we have two sex chromosomes, the X and the Y, and females are homozygous for that X chromosome, where males are heterozygous for X and Y. So male parents are the ones that determine the sex chromosomes because it is up to their gametes whether or not the offspring inherits that X or that Y. Similarly, we have ZW sex determination, which also has two sex chromosomes, except in this case, they are the Z chromosome and the W chromosome. And it is the female in this case that is heterozygous with Z and W, where males have two Z chromosomes. So like in XY, it is the heterozygote that determines the sex of the offspring, in this case, the female parent. There is also haplodiploid sex chromosome sex determination, and in this mechanism, there is only one sex chromosome, and the sex of the offspring is determined by how many of those sex chromosomes are present. So if we have two sex chromosomes, then the offspring is female, and if there's only one, then it's male. So in this case, the male parent does determine the sex of the offspring. Then we have haplodiploid genome sex determination, which, unlike the last three, doesn't have any sex chromosome involved. In this case, the sex of an individual is determined by its ploidy. If it's diploid, then it's female, and if it's haploid, then it's male. So in this case, the sex is determined by the male parent, and whether or not the female gamete is fertilized by a male gamete. We also have genic sex determination, which also has no sex chromosome, but this mechanism does have a sex determining gene present on an autosome. So as you can see here, we have our female allele autosomes and our male allele autosomes indicated by the different colored bands. And it is again the male who is heterozygous for the alleles, where the females are homozygous for the female allele. So once again, it is the male parent that is determining the sex of the offspring. Finally, we have environmental sex determination. And unlike all of the previous mechanisms, in environmental sex determination, the sex is not determined by the parents at all. In fact, in this case, the sex is determined by some environmental factor. Most problems you'll see will be temperature or some sort of chemical factor where there is a threshold, say 90 degrees, for example, where if the embryos are exposed to above that threshold, they will be one sex or below that threshold, they will be the other. You may expect in these situations that the offspring in one set or litter will all be the same sex, but that is not always the case. Because let's say we're looking at a nest, for example, the temperature can vary in different areas of the nest. So if we have a collection of eggs in a nest that is majorly above 90 degrees, then the majority of the offspring will be female. But in the colder patches of the nest, we will see male offspring. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that this was helpful. If you would like, there is a document with the blank Punnett squares in the description. So feel free to download it and fill it in for practice if you want. Have a great day and good luck on your exams.